every monday talk compliance brought to you by tally solutions you should log on to tally solutions or you can call 800 tally to get to know more about their newest features and newest products right now hamare sath ca shailesh kumar he's a director of uh, tax services we will uh, give you more information now he's presently working as a tax director with pkf ue he leads the tax team of pkf ue he's a chartered accountant and member of icai he has more than 16 years of post qualification experience in taxation he's worked previously with ey india and nangia and company llp he has rich experience of advising multinational companies on various domestic corporate tax issues and tax implications of cross border transactions international tax issues including taxation of offshore and onshore supplies and many more welcome to the show ca shailesh a pleasure to Good speak morning. to you Good morning. Thank you so much. I would like to first thank uh, the uh, Talk One Zero Zero Point Three FM and Tally Solutions uh, for inviting me on this show, and it's really a privilege for me to uh, talk on some of the common challenges being faced by the corporates in the UAE after introduction of this UAE corporate tax law. So, first of all, we would love to know the top challenge. <laughs> What is the top challenge people are facing right now? Okay, how do we register for it? How do we uh, prepare the books we've never prepared? I'm sure there are many. Yeah. So uh, as you know, uh, Tally is our partner. So one of the uh, the first challenge it actually comes to my mind. In fact, it is the biggest challenge uh, which is being faced by the corporates is the accounting. Hmm. So uh, the UAE has a unique uh, uh, business model where there are many companies within the same group, but they do not prepare separate books of accounts for each company so they uh, consolidate their financial statements on a group level the banks financing everything is happening on the group level but the uae corporate tax law provides a very stringent condition for grouping and if you don't follow those stringent conditions you cannot form a tax group for corporate tax purpose which in many of the situations is practically impossible to follow right in in their uh, fact pattern so that means that they have to segregate their uh, financial statements they have to prepare separate books of accounts they have to uh, file separate tax return and that is coming out to be uh, one of the major challenges uh, for the taxpayers for the companies here in the uae uh, so uh, specifically you know talking about tally when uh, i spoke to them uh, so they have uh, one unique solution when uh, where they say that uh, uh, you know uh, a group mm. can take a single license and they can manage uh, their uh, all their accounting for their entire group within the same single license and they can prepare the consolidated financial statements also for the group and also the standalone financial statements so that is you know some solution the uh, groups and their businesses taxpayers they will have to find out mm. uh, in order to prepare segregated financial statements when they are having the shared common expenses they have to uh, do a proper allocation of those expenses so there are so many aspects of that and this accounting i feel is the biggest challenge uh, for the taxpayers so right. um considering all the challenges that you have actually mentioned what are the challenges being faced by corporates now if they wish to register and subject to corporate tax as a tax group Uh, so uh, first challenge is that you know for if they want to register as a tax group there has to be one parent company mm. so and that parent company should hold minimum 95% shares directly or indirectly in the subsidiary companies now think about a uae situation where there is a group but all the group companies are held by individual shareholders so there is no parent subsidiary relationship right so this is the biggest challenge so they have to change all the shareholding in some of the cases there are local sponsors which are involved so they will have to talk to the local sponsors to you know uh, to comply with this 95% uh, condition so this requires a lot of restructuring within the corporate structure uh, and which which i feel that you know it takes time uh, you have to talk to the people you have to talk to the sponsors uh, implementing this structure it is going to take time so that's where you know it is one of the top challenges for the uae corporates right now when we talk about uh, tax grouping or group of companies we're talking about a turnover of let's say 10 million and above we're talking about big multinationals or no, it could also be it could small businesses also it could also be a small business also because as i said if almost every taxpayer hmm. in the uae is operating in a group 
Right. So multiple businesses is that the case? That's the issue. Yes, okay. multiple businesses, multiple uh, stores. I would say so. There are uh, companies which are operating different stores under different companies. They are preparing single financial statements. Right. Now, if for the corporate tax, uh, they either have to uh, register as a group and follow this ninety-five percent condition, uh, and or they have to prepare separate uh, books of accounts for each store. So this is the one common example that I've given. So there can be. many number of uh, you know permutation combinations <laughs> variations to that right if you have any questions for see shailesh kumar he's in our studio is live right now aap pooch sakte hain aap whatsapp kar sakte hain 0586861003 aap thoda sa detail mein jate hain uh, kya challenges hai which are being faced by trading industry especially those engaged in export and imports and free zone units as a whole uh, so uh, you know as you know that Dubai is a trading hub. Right. The main business where you know Dubai emerged it uh, as a you know global destination is because of its trading, right? right? Global trade, its share in the global trade. So, lot of companies they have set up their uh, establishments in the free zones uh, because uh, initially the government had promised uh, tax holiday, fifty year, almost fifty year uh, tax holiday to all the companies which set up their trading. But so, still, they have no qualified, non qualified. Yeah, they have. But this benefit of zero uh, percent tax on the trading activity is. restricted only to the designated zones and what i mean by designated zones there is a list of designated zones which is given in the vat law and they have replicated the same list in for the uae corporate tax purposes so just to give a common example uh, in dubai jabal ali dubai air for free zone so these are all custom bonded free, free zones right. which are the designated zones so if you are doing trading from that designated free zone you will be eligible for a 0% corporate tax correct if you are not from any of these designated free zone like dmcc hmm. dmcc is a common uh, free zone where a lot of traders are uh, present okay. but dmcc is not a designated zone so one of the major concerns for the dmcc companies is whether they will be eligible for a 0% corporate tax rate or not presently in as the law it stands today right it will not be it so will DM not right no, because D there is some part of the business which is also overlapping with the mainland business as well yeah so mainland business is one aspect but apart from that uh, mainland also a dmcc company uh, even if it is doing only exports hmm. or or selling to the mainland they will not be eligible to uh, 0% because corporate because it's non designated because it's non designated so that is one aspect nice. second aspect is that a lot of trade uh, of dubai it just goes from outside to outside so it's uh, imported from country a hmm. and exported to country b without even touching the shore of uae right. right and it constitutes a very large chunk of trading business in the uae wow even there is no clarity so uh, after uh, you know this uh, government issued the de decision uh, ministerial and cabinet decision right. on the qualifying activities qualifying income there was lot of uh, talk about that okay. while this third port shipment or will be eligible for a 0% corporate tax or not hmm. so uh, then uh, considering the you know representation there is lot of representation from the uh, industries and uh, you know trading bodies right. the government is now proposing that they will even consider this uh, third post shipment for a 0% corporate tax rate okay. but again the question uh, it it has not yet come in the final law hmm. so when it comes then we will have to see in what form the this uh, benefit comes which all corporates will be eligible for this benefit so we'll have to see uh, so these are some major uh, key challenges which are there plus there are certain conditions hmm. so even if you are a trading company uh you can't have you know other revenues if your other revenue which is a non qualifying revenue it exceeds 5 million there right. are only which is a very small threshold right. you will not be eligible for a 0% corporate tax rate and once you lose this benefit you will lose it for 5 years so we'll discuss more about that faheem ka ek question aaya yeah. hai silicon oasis free zone companies is it designated non designated non designated agar aapke sawal hai 0586861003 this is talk compliance brought to you by tally solutions talk 100.3 Daybreak आप सुन रहे हैं योर क्वेश्चन ऑन जीरो फाइव एट सिक्स एट सिक्स वन जीरो जीरो थ्री दिस इज टॉक कम्प्लायंस ब्रॉट यू बाई टैली सोल्यूशन सी ए शैलेश कुमार हमारे साथ एंड वीव बिन डिस्कसिंग द टॉप कॉपोरेट चैलेंजेस इन फैक्ट चैलेंजेस रिगार्डिंग कॉपोरेट टैक्स नॉट कॉपोरेट चैलेंजेस देर आर टू मेनी कॉपोरेट चैलेंजेस स्टार्टिंग विद 
increment of some salaries which we don't want to get into <laughs> but we've been talking about all the challenges and you've gone into detail to explain all these things and we've touched on trading as well moving on to information technology so what are the challenges for the information technology and id um, it enabled sector Uh, so uh, you know uh, when we talk about the free zones a lot of companies were set up uh, to do the development activities because we know this is a world of te- information technology all the countries they are moving towards the information technology and they want to be the leaders in the information technology so there were a lot of businesses uh, hubs which were set up uh, uh, you know in these uh, uh, free zones uh, providing the uh, either developing the software developing the apps or uh, you know providing providing the back office support also so a lot of like india has become a one of the largest uh, service provider in information technology so all the countries they have to catch up right uh, and tap the talent so and a lot of majority of this revenue from this information technology sector it either comes from the uae mainland also and it comes from the outside also so a lot of revenue goes into export of service right so for vat if you meet certain conditions on the export of service it is not subject to vat in the uae so that there is a uh, you know 0% benefit that you get it but similar uh, benefit is not granted in the uh, uh, corporate tax so in corporate tax very limited act, uh, set of activities or services are covered uh, and unfortunately information technology is not one of those services which is uh, covered within the list of qualifying activities mm. so that uh, you know the industry is expecting that to give push to the information technology sector and to uh, encourage corporates to invest more and more in the information technology at least on the export side so even if you don't want to exempt on the local revenues right. but still on the export revenue if you want people to invest in the free zones and set up their uh, it hubs right. in the uae mm-hmm. then possibly this tax benefit could have been uh introduced so that is a policy decision the government has to you know take a call, call on, on that, that yeah. yeah but also we see that you know there are so many small small companies as well who offer these it services again the threshold uh, is 375000 so there are two aspects one 375000 is the threshold for the profit which is available to every company so if you are earning profit up to 375000 dirhams in a year you are not subject to any corporate tax it's a 0% uh, rate mm-hmm. on uh, profits up to 375000 but still you have to register for the corporate tax you have to make the compliances you have to file the tax returns if there are any related party transactions you have to comply with the transfer pricing also that is one aspect right second is a small business relief hmm. uh, which is given to to the small taxpayer so if there is a company which is having a total turnover up to 83 million hmm. then a benefit for 3 years presently the government is giving the this benefit till 2026 yeah. till the 31st december 2026 so that uh, you can uh, choose uh, you know to a lesser compliance so of course those companies will also have to register for the corporate tax because unless you register for the corporate tax you will not the government know. The, even the government you will not know the government will also not know but there will be uh, lesser compliance so the government has notified the compliance forms either for the normal taxpayer or for the small taxpayers so we are yet to see what kind of compliances are required so like again uh, you know i am referring to india because it's a common uh, many people would understand that that uh, in india also for the small tax taxpayers they introduce very you know simple forms two pager uh, it return forms okay. where the income that doesn't thres- uh, cross a threshold so similar to that they can prescribe a very small simple compliance form but do we see a huge sector for it enabled services sector i mean is it a huge sector in ui uh i would say of course trading uh, is a huge sector construction is a huge sector but it was something you know which was coming up which you know people are investing so we have uh, you know many uh, many, many many businesses uh, many corporates uh, uh, which are investing into it and they have set up their uh, offices in the it sector and which are uh, having this concern it is right. still quite new isn't it i and mean it is new but uh, this world is of information technology right absolutely yeah yeah now moving on to the service industry as a whole uh you know what challenges are they facing and especially the ones who are operating through free zones yeah 
so so as i mentioned that you know there are a very limited set of activities in the service industry which are covered for the 0% uh, tax benefit uh, so one such activity is uh, headquarter services provided to the related parties treasury and finance uh, services provided to the related parties uh, shipping is covered uh, then logistic services are covered aircraft leasing and financing is covered so these are very limited and and uh, there are certain regulated uh, services like reinsurance Right. investment management fund management so all these limited set of activities are covered but apart from that there are lot of other activities which are being done in the free zones so if i talk about simple financial advisory hmm. right lot of uh, companies are there which are doing into the financial advisory uh, there are credit rating agencies so if i talk specifically about dfc also dfc is uh, full of such companies which are into the financial services so but very limited activities are covered okay. uh, within that so it could be better so uh, you know expectations of the corporates can be endless you know <laughs> but people are expecting that um, if you are in a free zone then uh, 0% you should zero percent so it, th that is a normal uh, expectation understanding assumption yeah yeah but yeah you, what activities you're covering and you know all the categories need to uh, be in place so now when we move to another challenge which is i think the transfer pricing challenge and lot of corporates do face it but again transfer pricing really applies to the ones who are uh, you know who have huge turnovers right no, no? that is that is that the, is another that assumption is the, that is an, another assumption and that is the you know biggest myth which is there so transfer pricing applies even if you have a single dirham transaction with a related party oh. So, oh. so so it doesn't matter okay. it doesn't it doesn't matter uh, the government has prescribed certain threshold so they have prescribed a threshold of annual turnover of ad 200 uh, million for a taxpayer right. or if you are a part of a large uh, multinational which is having a global consolidated turnover of 3.15 billion uh, dirham on a group level so these two thresholds are applicable only for maintaining the mandatory local file and master file which are the documentation requirements so you know if you are having transaction with the related parties there are many aspects to such uh, uh, you know compliance transfer oh. pricing compliance so as as i mentioned first of all we have to understand that transfer pricing is applicable to all the corporate uh, taxpayers which are having transaction with the related party irrespective of the transaction threshold the threshold is only for maintaining the mandatory annual filing which is a, a local file and a master file so that is so one then part compliance of the part is gone there no there compliance is one part more, still remains yes there is first compliance is that transfer pricing disclosure form which is a simple disclosure form wherein you give a list of your related parties where you give a list of your related party transactions with the value and you give a declaration that all your transactions with your related parties are at arms length so this is the normal disclosure form which is there in all the jurisdictions in uae we are yet to see how it will this look will be like implemented, okay. how it will look like a disclosure form so this is the basic transfer pricing compliance which every taxpayer has to do okay. unless the government comes up with some threshold on that also no threshold has been given as of now mm. right so this disclosure form will be there your responsibility as a taxpayer to maintain arms length pricing with all your related party is irrespective of any transaction threshold so this is a basic responsibility like as a taxpayer you have a responsibility to discharge your tax liability correctly Correct. to calculate it correctly and pay tax honestly Correct. at 9% on that so this is your responsibility right. so on a transfer pricing aspect also this is your responsibility to disclose all your related party transactions and also declare that all is at arms length right no, for I'll example ek uh, situation dete hai uh, for example i have a restaurant mm -hmm. and uh, i'm running my business and then you know the suppliers of the raw materials of the vegetables is my sister for example she has a company and this is where the transfer pricing yes. Yes. First degree, second degree, third degree, fourth degree. Oh, oh. oh. Fourth, fourth degree. Yes. So that is the problem. So I'll tell you what are the unique uh, things within the UAE transfer pricing because we've seen the transfer pricing in other jurisdictions as well. So typically, transfer pricing is applicable only on international transactions or cross-border transactions. Why? Because if you are making from one country, if you are making payment to the other country, then there is a erosion of the tax base in the first country from where the payment is being done. 
right so there we you say that you know you are uh, taking an expense deduction in in the local company whereas the foreign company which is taking that payment out is not paying any tax or paying tax at a lower rate so then you know this transfer pricing comes into picture because there is a tax arbitrage available okay uae because of its unique nature and i'll explain a, a little bit on that uh uae the tax presently the corporate tax is only on the corporates right there is no uh, individual individual personal income personal income tax so there is a natural tendency that if the corporates uh, move the amounts or profits or expenses to the individuals personal account yeah to the personal account and uh, as an expense then they will get a benefit on the corporate side oh, on the 9% so that so is wo catch karne ke liye that is one aspect secondly they have also made uh, you know they have not made it an exception like you know so the transfer pricing is applicable even on the domestic transaction again unless the government comes up with an exception presently it is applicable both on domestic and uh, international transaction so even if two companies which are paying tax at the same rate 9% and 9% they are subject to maintain the transfer pricing mm -hmm. that is one aspect which is not there generally in the other uh, jurisdictions but this is a big compliance matter so you know uh, as a professional right what i can suggest you know uh, and of course the government uh, has you know they have to consider the policy decisions on their own right but But they can restrict the transfer pricing only on transaction, say between the free zone and the mainland, wherein the free zone is enjoying the zero percent tax benefit and the mainland is paying nine percent. There is clearly a tax arbitrage available, so therefore it should be subject to transfer pricing. Again, transaction between individuals and the corporates, mm -hmm. individuals are not subject to tax, whereas corporates are subject to nine percent. Right. There is arbitrage available, so therefore it should be subject to transfer pricing. International transactions in line with the global uh, guidelines, it should be subject to uh, transfer pricing. Apart from these three categories. possibly the government may consider exempting the transaction between the two related parties which are subject to the same level of taxation uh, you know they can exempt or exclude these transactions from the uh, transfer pricing Th that is a wish list you know as a professional <laughs> or as a right. corporate also if uh, that is uh, met it will be it will reduce a lot of compliances on the transfer pricing Now we got a question. Hello, C H L H. Now we understand that you know max thirty percent of EBITDA is allowable. थोड़ा अलग है सवाल from transfer pricing. We understand the max thirty percent of EBITDA is allowable as interest expense. Is there any way to carry forward the interest interest expense above the thirty percent cap? If yes, then for how many years? Yes, so it is possible, and you can carry forward. So if there is an interest disallowance because of this uh, uh, exclusion, uh, because of this uh, limit of thirty percent of EBITDA, you can uh, carry it forward to the next ten years. Oh wow! And also there is one more uh, aspect to it that government has uh, to again to provide uh, relief to the small taxpayers. They say that uh, uh, if your interest expense is not exceeding a threshold of twelve million, and this is a big big threshold, twelve million AD, then this thirty percent cap will not apply. So this is also one aspect which needs to be considered. So Ushir, आपका ये सवाल और उसका आंसर आपको मिल गया है कि yes you can carry forward for the next ten years. आपके सवाल आप भेज सकते हैं दिस इज टॉक कम्प्लायस ब्रॉटी बेटाली सोल्यूशन एंड सी ए शैलेश कुमार हमारे साथ स्टेट टू हंड्रेड पॉइंट थ्री टॉक कम्प्लायस ब्रॉटी बेटाली सोल्यूशन सी ए शैलेश कुमार हमारे स्टूडियो में आपके सवाल आप भेज सकते हैं जीरो फाइव एट सिक्स एट सिक्स वन जीरो जीरो थ्री वे टॉक अबाउट द टॉप चैलेंजेस ऑफ कॉपरेट टैक्स एंड इन डिफरेंट डिफरेंट एस्पेक्ट ऑफ इट वी आर डिस्कसिंग वे डिस्कस्ड अबाउट ट्रेडिंग वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट फ्री जोन वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट ट्रांसफर प्राइसिंग and i think we were continuing on uh, the part right about yeah. right. transfer pricing so uh, so huge topic yeah we can go on for a hour i think with <laughs> transfer pricing transfer pricing can have one full hour session <laughs> right so transfer pricing as i mentioned uh, first on the compliances what all will be the compliances uh, in terms of the disclosure, disclosure form, form yeah. local file master file uh, mm. so all those will be there but apart from the you know uh, compliances you have to look at the transaction each transaction level also what all transactions will be subject to the transfer pricing so one common transaction is the salary paid to your director or shareholder remuneration yeah. remuneration oh that's so, a big aspect yahan pe yes and they say first of all uh those uh directors shareholders should be working 
for the company so it should be incurred for the purpose of business and secondly it should be at the market price now what is a market price hmm. that is a big challenge Correct. and the market price will change from company to company industry to industry right, right? depending on the turnover depending on the profitability because it there is no benchmark right even for the salary it, it forget about the relationship from company to company this it, it changes for a yeah. same position for correct. the same individual yeah. it changes depending right. on the size of business the company is doing correct so it is how do you find out a market price or a benchmark so there are ways uh, you know uh, as professionals uh, you know we have uh, been trying to find out uh, to benchmark the salaries but again it's a big big question big task yeah big task. because so many factors come into effect when that happens isn't it the experience um you know educational like right capability yeah. is where you're but coming even if from? you are giving more than the market price you have got enough good reasons why you're doing it right Correct. will that be uh, ca- counted as good reason so i'll tell you a lot of businesses uh, in the ua uh, so they were established in 30 years 40 years back right and the people who built this business if you talk about their educational qualification it was not much at that point in time yeah. because it was not required what they did they took on the entrepreneurial journey right. at that point in time where nobody was willing to right. and they created a space in the market they created their own business model they created their own ip right so all these things you cannot just measure quantify, in terms of you, cannot, you can't quantify yeah. right? right so so it's it's a big thing so if ceo or managing director of such company is drawing a significant a amount a million that would be sufficient but then how to justify that to the fta what all because fta may not be able to appreciate the kind of business and and all these things have to be brought down to the paper correct right the bringing measurement part the measurement right? part yeah. so bringing everything to the paper it is a challenge interesting uh, aapke paas agar sawal hai to do let us know we've got another 20 minutes with ca shailesh kumar uh Right now on Talk 100.3, you can uh, send us a WhatsApp 0586861003. This is Talk Compliance brought to you by Tally Solutions. Talk 100.3. Brought to you by Tally Solutions. See, Kumar, हमारे साथ है सर थैंक सबसे पहले तो थैंक यू वेरी मच द वे यूर एक्सप्लेनिंग यू नो इट इज रियली अमेजिंग इट्स फैंटेस्टिक यस सो इज इफ इवन समन लाइक मी टू अंडरस्टैंड Yeah so what have you understood uh, let's do a, it a lot a lot vivek <laughs> <laughs> now let's move to offshore companies mm-hmm. uh, the concerns for offshore companies for example you know jabal ali offshore companies or rasul khema offshore companies what challenges are they facing so first of all uh, status of a offshore company because when the offshore companies were promoted they were supposed to be outside of the ua that's where this term offshore the jurisdiction this jurisdiction ah. so the first question whether they are subject to the ua corporate tax or not on the reading of the law it seems that yes they will be subject to the ua corporate tax law because they are a legal person juridical person incorporated in accordance with a law of the ua which is the definition under the law right so going by that definition offshore companies are subject to the ue corporate tax but then comes the second question whether they are the mainland company or they are a free zone company because most most of these uh, uh, offshore companies like if we talk about jabal ali also so jabal ali is free a free zone, zone yeah. right so a natural uh, question or natural feeling which comes that okay it should also be a part of the free zone only but if they are part of the free zone then there are certain other conditions like maintaining the substance requirement Correct. so if you want to claim the 0% tax benefit in a free zone you need to have a substance offshore companies typically they don't have substance because they don't have a uh, uh, visas for their employees they can't have right they don't have bank accounts in the uae uh, so essentially uh, those are all companies which are holding investments holding properties uh, they are also doing some overseas businesses but uh, there is a big question mark on the status of the offshore companies how they will be treated for the uae corporate tax purposes so Amazing. that clarity is still going to come or it's already there Uh, clarity uh, further clarity is required uh, required yeah okay 
so we cannot not let you go without talking about real estate because Dubai real estate is absolutely booming at the moment. We are talking about all the advantages of buying property and so on and and subletting and all that we've been covering throughout the show. What would be some of the challenges that the Dubai real estate sector is facing? Indeed. So real estate as you mentioned Sharon it's a big sector for mm-hmm. the UAE. Uh so uh, UAE real estate again uh, as we have dealt with uh, many clients so it is structured in a very unique manner like you know uh, so there are many real estate companies uh, which are owning the properties so in a you know diversified manner very differently like some of the properties are owned in by the individuals in their personal name some of the properties are owned by the company so it, there is a mix and match some rental goes directly to the owner's account some rentals go to the company account there is some written arrangement sometimes there is no written arrangement between the you know property management company and the owner there is all mix and match which is happening i'm talking purely on in terms of accounting in terms of you know so when we go to the compliance side we have to be uh, so there are you know few aspects which need to be considered right. first of all the government has said that real estate income earned by an individual will not be subject to the corporate tax which is a big relief to the uh, taxpayers here because you know lot of individuals uh, own these properties but when we come to the corporate structure when we have this mix and match situation what will be an appropriate structure uh, for a corporate uh, uh, whether they should hold the cro- properties in the individual name whether they should hold the properties in the company name what should be the back to back arrangement between the individual uh, property owner and the company which is actually company is managing the property right individuals cannot ma- manage the properties of such a large extent when there are you know large number of some thousands of properties which right. is being managed by a company so there are a lot of uh, that kind of questions uh, which uh, need to be answered and essentially the law is clear uh, on that but the businesses are not clear businesses need to find out their own solutions uh, to match with the business reality the way they have been doing business for decades now they have to change it so just to clarify what you mentioned is individuals they are not taxed on their rental returns or capital if gains if capital gains they buy, sell, yeah, right, yes. commissions and so on but if the property is under a company is that still a gray area or no, do they that is subject to corporate tax right that is subject to corporate tax Done. so any properties under your company name is subject to corporate tax yes. right so whenever you buy some 10 properties now put it on my on name on my okay? name <laughs> uh, i mean your name sorry <laughs> We got a question from Pankaj. Now we were talking about the substance part of the offshore company. So bringing you back to that question, now if offshore does not have substance, does it mean all offshore companies are involved in tax avoidance, or as we wait? It is not about tax avoidance, but uh, simply they will have to comply with the UAE corporate tax. They will have to prepare their uh, books of accounts, tax return, and whatever taxable profit they earn, they will have to pay tax nine percent on the profits. हाँ सो टैक्स अवॉइडेंस नहीं होगा पंकज थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर योर क्वेश्चन ऑल्सो मूविंग ऑन टू अदर चैलेंजेस अदर सेक्टर्स वी डिस्कस सो मनी अबाउट डिफरेंट सेक्टर्स नॉल इट्स मूव ऑन टू द कॉमन चैलेंजेस विच ऑल टैक्स पेयर्स आर फेसिंग आई एम श्योर दर इज अज लिस्ट देर इज अज लिट पर बट जस्ट समराइज आई जस्ट टेक अ few of them so first is the corporate tax registration process so the process has started for the public joint stock companies it has started for the llcs also uh, but uh, foreign branches Uh, like branch of a foreign company or even the qualifying free zone company we are facing some challenge if there is a foreign owned company which has a foreign shareholder so there are also some challenges are being faced so the corporate tax registration process is not fully live yet so for uh, you know for the foundations or other kind of taxpayers so people want to register so we are just advising the clients to hold on f- till you know the process is fully live and you know and good part must uh, appreciate good part is that there is no timeline given by the government best part uh, yeah. yeah that is the best part so you can register uh, till the time your due date of filing the return comes so it means uh, even if a taxpayer which is uh, having their uh, financial is starting from 1st june 2023 which has already started mm. their tax return will be due by 28th of february 2025 so they still have time till that so this is the latest calendar period that you can have agar aapka booking uh, accounting system abhi tak nahi hai set 
then this is the latest you can come up with the first june se leke yeah, yes yes yeah. so if you haven't prepared then first june se aap try karo 2023 onwards you'll yes. get time till 2025 yes so it uh, again it depends on uh, your uh, calendar year or financial year that you are I mean following. someone who's never done yeah, accounting yeah. so yes, they yes. can start now they can start oh, they okay. can start okay so that is a fayda no for everyone yeah. yes So what would you say are, are some of the challenges that's actually faced by startups and I think that's quite important. Yeah so as uh, for startups uh, as we mentioned about uh, we talked about the small business relief right so a startup which is not having a significant turnover they can and their turnover is not exceeding 3 million uh, uh, dirham for a year. so they can uh, actually take this benefit for at least next 3 years and then after that uh, till 31st december 2026 and after that probably the government may extend this uh, benefit again i mean that's what the expectation is mm. so that is a benefit for the startups then uh, uh, you know startups uh, they generally they will not have profit so they right. have, the government has given this threshold of 375000 also so they may not have actually any tax liability because of uh, this initial threshold uh, given but still their compliance requirement is there so they have to register for the corporate tax uh, they have to uh, file the return and all those stuff right. so okay. that is there some of the other challenges that i wanted to talk about by the other taxpayer is that there are a lot of aspects where the taxpayers want a clarity from the uh, fta in relation to their specific business aspects business challenges so every business is different and having regard to that they want some clarification from the fta that clarification process has not yet started uh, so why this clarification process is important because uh, some of the businesses they want to structure or restructure their uh, uh, transactions or business and if they have a clarity uh, on such then it will uh, ease yeah. their decision making so that is one aspect uh, then the compliance forms we talked about the corporate tax return form the right. transfer pricing disclosure form right. local file form master file form so all these forms have not yet been notified released, huh? not not yet been released so once uh, you know the government releases these forms people will have some clarity and streamline their streamline entire process preparation yeah. exactly so when they have to prepare they can actually prepare for that interesting uh, we have got another 7 minutes with the ca shailesh kumar agar aapke paas sawal Do let us know zero five eight six eight six one zero zero three. This is Talk Compliance brought to you by Tally Solutions. Log on to kgtallysolutions dot com, or you can always call them eight hundred Tally. Talk one hundred point three. डे ब्रेक आप सुन रहे हैं विवेक एंड शेरॉन आपके साथ एंड सी शैलेश कुमार आई थिंक वी आर मूविंग टू द एंड ऑफ द session but quickly let's uh, you know discuss about the challenges for individuals right yeah individuals freelancers earning other than investment and uh, real estate income as well yeah so uh, the government has exempted the individuals uh, from taking a corporate tax registration or doing the corporate tax compliance provided their income is restricted to three categories okay. so first is wages which is your employment salary uh, uh, salary employment income and that too you should be mindful because you spoke about the golden visa thing right even the golden visa holders mm. uh, which are drawing uh, salary from their company mm. they should have an employment contract because that is the specific requirement under the you government decision tax. yeah for your salary to be tax exempt so that is a tax advice that i'm giving to you now this is very <laughs> interesting what you just pointed out because lot of people employees don't have a work contract they don't have an employment contract so who's at fault here i don't know who's at fault here but definitely the employees who are not having the employment contract they will be considered as freelancers and there the restriction is of 1 million dirham per year if their income exceeds that amount then they are subject to the uae corporate tax they need to register for the uae corporate tax so the bottom line is that if you are a salaried person whatever arrangement you have with your employer doesn't matter you get it covered by an employment contract right and right. if you're company doesn't uh, you know help you with that you can always go to the ministry of human resources and amortization to get it done mm -hmm. but yeah moving on to other than no that no comments on that <laughs> <laughs> uh, other than that uh, you know at, in the stock market in the share market if you're running uh, doing tr trading activity is that also covered so uh, essentially what they are saying is that uh, you are doing this business uh, or this investment activity essentially this is an investment activity okay. irrespective of the frequency which does not require a trade license here 
the factor will be because it is a kind of an investment activity okay. so if you are in making an investment once in a year or you are making this investment on a daily basis purchasing selling there is a very thin line of difference right but there is a threshold for that also is it or so this what we've noticed is a lot of people from india from other parts of the world they come here and they are you know uh, indulging in uh, trading activities and also encouraging everyone to get it chhodo apni naukri aur start trading and we get a lot of phone calls also Correct. you know are aapne invest kiya ki nahi amazon ke share i i agree so so there is actually it is a thin thin line of difference as of now considering the definition of the investment income which is provided by the government it seems that if individuals are doing that they will not be covered okay. but uh, we don't know if if something further clarity comes on that uh, we will to see right but if you are not required to take a trade license for doing such kind of activity and this is you know purchasing selling of investments share securities and all right. it should possibly be not covered that you can do but essentially it's what again individual you are doing individual it. so that's yeah, why we are all talking about individuals right yeah, yeah. So the last point, right? Yeah. So what are we talking about? Challenges, challenges, challenges. From this time we started, but just to end things off, what are the challenges for the UAE entities uh, forming part of the MNE uh, group getting impacted by the BEPS pillar two regimes? So this is uh, uh, one last bit, which uh, you know uh, the entire world is wait- waiting because uh, this uh, corporate tax in the UAE was introduced also as. fallout or as a result of the pillar 2 framework which was signed by more than 143 countries around that uae was part of that and there the the all these countries they agreed that there should be a global minimum rate of tax okay so right? the global corporate that 15% yes okay this is that pillar this is that pillar so so f- from that perspective the threshold is that uh, euro 750 million is the threshold that any multinational enterprise and by multinational enterprise i mean that any company which is having a branch or a subsidiary in more than one country okay so a purely a uae based company which does not have any footprint outside will not be covered by pillar 2 but a uae based company which has any branch or subsidiary in any gcc country or outside of the uae anywhere it will be covered by the pillar 2 framework if the global consolidated turnover of that group exceeds uh, euro 750 million mm. so if they fall within that framework then the oecd has presently prescribed a minimum rate of 15% they are yet to f- finalize the rules for that so this is a proposal by the oecd uh, there are different countries which are preparing for that uh, possibly uh, this will also be implemented from 1st of january 2024 if all goes in line with the expectations if not then it will be deferred but we'll have to see because we have to understand that in other countries the corporate tax is already implemented right Correct. so if, even if the uh, oecd prescribes a global minimum rate of tax they simply have to incorporate it that in their own domestic tax law which is already implemented so the way in the press in the process of Im- implementation so you think there will be double taxation over there as well and also the point is that you know 15% is a good number for these multinational enterprises correct so to uh, in fact this uae corporate tax uh, law has been introduced to avoid that double taxation only because uh, if uae does not bring this corporate tax and they don't uh, follow this framework then possibly the uae companies may get taxed in some other jurisdiction correct so which why which lose their revenue yeah. exactly so that is the perspective so how this pillar 2 framework will be introduced how it will be you know merged or synergized with the uae corporate tax law so that we'll need to see so that is uh, one aspect which is a thing of future but that is going to come for sure for sure yeah but yeah i know more clarity on that ca shailesh kumar we're running out of time lekin aapne itne acche se hame samjhaya we're feeling really knowledgeable now <laughs> we and are, we'll start yes. calling ca sharon now in this <laughs> <laughs> yes next week <laughs> but thank you so much it was such a pleasure thank you thank you for this uh, opportunity and uh, quickly you know, before you go how can people get in touch with you linkedin pe aap kafi active hai yes hai? yes i am uh, active on linkedin uh, uh, my email id is s kumar at the rate of pkfuae.com so you can reach me out on my email also s kumar at pkfuae.com that's his email id or linkedin pe ca shailesh kumar yeah shailesh kumar that's it shailesh kumar thank you so lovely. much lovely it was so nice having you here in the studios thank you thank you so much